There we go. Hey everyone, and we're back. My name is Miss Scarlet Tanager, and we are playing some Rule of Rose with a screaming topless child thing. Okay then. <laughs> oh, I love this music. What I in blazes? So Hi. Just who did this? Who Hoffman? made this mess? <laughs> totally Was wasn't me. No. Oh my. God. Tell me. I wonder how long my webcam's been out of. Answer me, Diana. Great, time for Hoffman to creepy. Mummy or Daddy, you ever want to if you don't like that? I am uncomfortable. I won't be angry. Just answer me. I'm uncomfortable. You were in charge after all. I kind of feel sorry for Diana now. Yuck! How disgusting. Exactly! Hoffman's a jerk, and he's achy, and I don't like him. Hi. Oh, now I see. Wasn't me. It was you. No. It was your fault that I got into trouble. No. No, I'm a Give good girl. I'm a good girl. <laughs> what? Oh my, I see a stain. I got to icky clean water. it up. Meg or is Mr. behind. Hoffman will be angry with me. Meg is behind the the thing, and that's suggestive. She's like, oh, I'm going to get this rag really dirty and start scrubbing it on your face. It's like an eraser. I'm going to erase your face, even though that's not possible. Also, that water is probably really disgusting. And she passed out again. How many pass outs does this make in this game? This has got the one at the beginning, you got the one at that chapter, you got the one at that chapter. At least four. This is at least the fourth or fifth time. I can't remember exactly how many, though. Hi, puppy. I want the fishy. So we pulled the fishy right out, and it's broken. Yes, and it was a mermaid. They took the top half of a doll and the bottom half of a fish and tied them together. A slip of paper is peeking out of its tummy. I am yours, even in death. So that boss fight really wasn't as much as I hiked it up to be. It's just I remember it being a lot more difficult when I was little. Yes, I played this game when I was little. And by little, I mean early teens. Mermaid Princess... A long, long time ago, the mermaid princess fell in love with a human prince. But for years, her love went unrequited. Before long, she was old and decrepit. All alone, even on the day of her death. The poor, poor princess of the sea kingdom. Who would ever want to become an ugly woman like her? I am yours, even in death. That's... An interesting interpretation of the Little Mermaid. The unlucky princess remembered a thingy mabob so she wrote it on the chalkboard. Sorry, I went too quickly and I wasn't paying attention. So she will never forget it ever again. And that is? Here's the whole thing, guys. The entire promise. Everlasting true love, I am yours. We'll find out the meaning of those words later on. Just not quite yet. And I've got some water here because my throat is starting to itch. It's good to be playing a console game after so long. So many PC games, so many emulated games. Yes, I want to save. Are you kidding me, game? Choop, choop, choop. Choop, choop, choop. Okay. We are now in October. The next month on the calendar. Well, actually, we are in December. The tail end of December. I'm recording this on the 30th of December, 2015. Tomorrow is a New Year's Eve, and I plan to be streaming that day. Though you guys will probably be seeing this video in 2016. Can I leave now? Well, the dude's not there, so I'm just gonna book it, if you don't mind. Can I leave, please? Oh, I can. 
Like, oh no, and kidnapped. Because you know, if I wasn't unconscious for long enough. This game is just made of times where I get to be unconscious. Also, I think I remember this one. Would you like to save? Uh, I don't really need to, because I literally just did. But... June! The gingerbread house. So now we're back in June. We were in October, now we're in June. So you could say this is before she arrived at the orphanage. Hi. What is it with creepy older men in this game? I think it just leaves me there. It just leaves me there amongst the roses. You guys should recognize the roses, by the way. We have seen those before. In the beginning, there was roses. Many, many roses. Of rosy types. When the unlucky girl awoke, she was in a rose garden. We have a lot of those here in Portland. This place was strange, but familiar. Okay. Looking around, the girl noticed that her faithful companion was missing! The puppy's gone! The lonely, unlucky girl became very sad. Brown's gone, guys. We have to do this whole chapter without Brown. Great. Pleasant. So let's follow the creepy guy. Sure. Because that's probably what the game wants to do. That's a lot of rose flowers. Are they supposed to be wild roses? Or does he tend this house and then his actual house at the gingerbread house, which um, implies he's going to eat us, which is bad. Pretty bad. Don't want that. Uh, well, what was I saying? Why am I so bad at remembering the things that I have, that come out of my mouth? I I'll get onto a tangent, and then I'll go onto a tangent of the tangent, and then I'll go on a tangent of the tangent of the tangent, and then I can't remember what my original point or what the original discussion was. Hmm. Oh well, I'm taking this. I got a shovel. I took the shovel. It's a weapon, I think. I can't remember if it's better than the lead than the iron pipe. I don't think so. Is it? Either way, I've got a shovel. Ah, oh, no, we'll use the shovel for now. Why not? I j I just can't remember if it's more powerful than the iron pipe. I mean. Instinctively, I want to say that it's better than the iron pipe, because it's got that big old spade on the end of it. And hitting somebody with an iron pipe probably isn't as bad as slicing through their everything with the edge of a shovel. Oh great, now it's time for the creepiest song! I sang a little bit of it earlier, but... Oh wait, it's not time for the song yet. It's just time for the creepy guy with the alcohol. Okay. Have I mentioned how weird this game is yet? I know I have, but it's still weird. Small peas, every which kind of pea. He's singing the pea song. He finds a pea. If you guys remember the um, cutscene earlier in the game where they were stringing up the rabbit in the bloody bag. The On Thursday, the pea kicks and screams. The song that he's Come not Friday, singing, but speaking, grinds up is that. The pee. Don't grind up On the pea! Saturday. I don't wanna- am I the pea? I'm pretty sure I'm the pea. I don't wanna be the- that's bad. Hi. Ah, welcome home. It's almost bedtime for you. He's just casually holding a pistol to his head. Good night, Joshua. Wait, I'm not Joshua. Or am I Joshua? I like teddy bear. Is there anything in here? This bundle of letters were hidden under the bed sheets. Oh dear, these are the letters from the Princess of the Rose to me. To Mr. Joshua, the bear in distress, my name is Wendy. 
I always watch you from the sky, Mr. Joshua. Why are you trapped down there? November 17th. My prince is in need of rescue. It was a pleasure to meet you, my dear prince. Oh, what a wonderful encounter. Yes, I only wish there was a world for just you and I, the prince and the princess. Don't worry, I'll set you free. Oh, my poor, kind prince. You were worried because that man sometimes seems crazy, right? Well, don't worry. I know where he hides that awful thing of his. So let's run away together. You can leave it all, t you can leave it all to me. Everything will be all right. My prince, please don't worry. I'll do anything for you. Just pledge your love for me. That's all I ask. Thank you, my eternal prince. Tomorrow night I shall unlock your shackles. Let us live together forever. Everlasting true love, I am yours. So, this Wendy lady is the person we made the promise to. I wonder who she is. I could have, we could already know who Wendy is. She is the sick princess, but I missed the opportunity to go meet her in the sick bay. She's perpetually sick and is always in the sick bay. In the other chapters, at least. Except for the time when I actually went to go find her, she wasn't there. I got a teddy bear. Right then, the trapped, unlucky girl heard a gentle voice. Hi. I came just like I promised. Looks like there's a something, something, something. Stay right there. I'll help you out. It was going by too fast. I'm sorry. Now we just gotta wait, I think. Look under the blanket? Yes. The boy's shirt, pants, and shoes have been neatly laid out on the bed. For some reason, Den Jennifer felt a sudden pain in her chest. That's not creepy at all. Are we supposed to put on the clothes? By the way, those are the same clothes Joshua, or the prince, was wearing earlier. The plot thickens, it does. Can I leave, please? How about now? So yeah, there's not much to do at this point. We are literally sitting here until Wendy comes to let us out. Hopefully she doesn't get caught by the crazy guy with the gun. Because that would be bad. Newspaper clipping. Luxury airship missing. England's largest luxury airship, which has just set sail on its virgin flight, a flight celebrated across the country with great fanfare, was reported today to have gone off course and is currently missing. It is speculated that the vessel diverted from its course to avoid a low-pressure system approaching from the south, but its whereabouts are still unknown. Due to the heavy thunder and rain that have blanketed the area since yesterday, the search for the airship has faced many difficulties. We were on the airship and the airship crashed. When... Jennifer was little, of course. Jennifer, I've unlocked the door. I'll keep a lookout, so come right away. Okay. So Jennifer... It's implied that Jennifer was a child on this airship. The airship crashed and it killed her parents. She was found by the gingerbread man. Um, found by the owner of his house. Gregory, I think his name is. And Gregory took her in. But Gregory is not the... Um, Stay most stable of individuals because it's implied that his son got killed or died or got sick or something and now he thinks that we're his son or thought when we were little hi Wendy let's run away before the man comes back before we go we should find that dangerous thing and take it with us it's for his own good what dangerous thing is she talking about probably his gun I'm gonna get a gun. The gun, however, only has a single shot. We're not going to use it. You'll see why at the end of the game. Hi. I'm fine now. Let's go, shall we? Oh, wait. I don't have the gun. She has the gun. I get the gun eventually, though. Books, ink, cigarette butts. There are some of the things on this disorganized desk along with a picture frame. It's faded in spots, but the picture is of a happy family. So it's Gregory and the original Joshua, who is probably dead, and that's what happened to him, and now he thinks that I'm Joshua. Great. Crazy man is crazy. 
Gotta follow Wendy, gotta get the hell out of Dodge before we get turned into, uh, the proverbial Hansel and Gretel. Funnily enough, she looks like Gretel. Does that make me Hans? I don't know! Phone! I thought I turned you off! I apologize. Then again, it's not a let's play of mine if you don't get a random Metal Gear Solid tone when my phone goes off. Joshua! Joshua! Let's run away! Run away before you get caught! By the creepy man with the creepiness! And if you guys noticed the bear that we got? It's the same bear that was sitting on the seat, like sitting on the prince's throne earlier. Coincidence? I think not. Hi, Wendy. I'm so glad. Now we can always be together. Say, I have a favor I want to ask. Will you trade your teddy bear with my brooch? Aww, now they've each got a thing of each other's. You guys noticed that Jennifer was wearing, has been wearing a brooch this entire time, right? Well, just about this entire time. We should give him a name. Yeah, she's... Remember how I've been wearing a brooch this entire time? This entire game? Yeah. How about Joshua? Joshua. Yes, that's a wonderful name. But she's not wearing a brooch right now. Because we're in the past. I'll cherish him as much as I cherish you. So let's renew our pact. Everlasting true love, I am yours. Cause that's not creepy at all. It's just a little bit creepy. It's just a, it's just a smidgen creepy. And also it's not going to end poorly at all for the inhabitants of the orphanage. Especially when all of the adults mysteriously go missing and they take over all Lord of the Flies style. Which, if you hadn't realized at this point, is kind of what happened. Not spoilers, we've pretty much seen it the entire time. It's just some crazy, crazy Lord of the Flies thing going on. And now we, of course, wake up elsewhere. How many times have I passed out? Hi. He's like, hey, wake up. I need you to go get me a thing. You should go back and hang around with Amanda where you belong. If I remember correctly, I think this is the last chapter on the airship. I think. And you get to see the airship looking a li little bit more decrepit. It's not obvious, because this game is all about its subtlety. But you get to see, like, ropes. Where there weren't ropes before, you know, like it's binding everything together. The Rag Princess Sews. The Rag Princess being- oh. Well, that's unpleasant. The Rag Princess, of course, being Amanda. Who has always been a very nice, good friend to us. This is an emergency. Joshua the Bear is missing. Search teams are on the lookout. The person who finds him will receive a red crayon and will be invited to join the Aristocrat Club. Red Crayon Aristocrats. Well then. Hi, Brown! Don't you ever leave me again, Pupkins. I love your face. Okay, what do we got here? Nothing just yet. We need to find something of Joshua's. Like his ribbon or his hand or something? Hmm. Well, first off, we need to go see the Rag Princess. We need to go talk to Amanda. Because she is making something extra special for us. Something that we're not going to be allowed to see for a little while. But still. Oh great, it's the lady who's always eating her hand. Why would someone steal something so precious to the princess? Why? Stop eating your hand, that doesn't taste very good. I'm pretty sure that raw human skin does not taste very good. Especially when it's not cooked and sauteed with some onions. I mean, what? That's yeah, like just the, the cheeks, the some onions and mushrooms. Pretty sure it's just, just, just the cheeks. 
That's a Hannibal Lecter reference, by the way. I'm sure Joshua will like the story I wrote for him. Of course he will, Gregory. Of course. You know, you've always written the best child stories. Jennifer found the rag princess. Time for more storybooks, guys. Ahem. Rag Princess Once upon a time, there was a girl who sewed rags day in and day out. The stench of rags seeped into her clothes. Her stepsisters wore beautiful dresses and went to the ball. The girl stayed at home, and her jealousy festered. One day, a fairy godmother came and cast a spell upon the girl and said, Sew yourself an ash-gray dress, and then you can go to the ball like your stepsisters. The girl patched together a suti, the sooty rags, and that's how she became the rag princess. A very stinky princess indeed. She stunk up the whole town, in fact. No girl who stunk so would be allowed into the ball. I'll make that girl wear this awful dress myself. And thus the rag princess and the girl in the rag dress became pay, play pals. So the rag princess and the girl in the rag dress became pals. Okay. Also, worst fairy godmother ever. You think she would have done some bibbity bobbity boo thing and turned the dress into something beautiful that you could go to the ball to? No, no, no. She just lied. She straight up lied. Hi, Amanda. And with that really creepy breathing, we're going to end the episode here, guys. My name is Miss Scarlett Tanager, and we are playing some of the Rose. I'll see you all in the next episode.